afternoon, everybody. How are you guys doing? Had a good morning? Well, if you are just joining us at Center Stage at the 2017 Provincial Skills Canada Competition, you are in for a treat. We have Edmonton's very own Jarvis Greiner, who grew up here in Edmonton, went to Los Angeles to go to film school, and has worked on the sets of shows like, oh, Fear Factor, Wipeout. He's been on ABC TV, he's been all over the place. So give a big round of applause for our very own Jarvis Greiner. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, my name is Jarvis, that's right. You, what a great intro, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, my name is Jarvis Greiner. I'm a director producer from here, and if you can't tell by the overgrown Cassian chops, I'm from Edmonton. And um, how many, first of all, how many of you guys actually are competing in the film TV competition here that they got going on this weekend? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, so you guys are all, these are the kind of people I wanted to talk to because one thing people like to tell me is that you have to go to Los Angeles, you have to go to New York, you have to go to Vancouver, you have to go to Toronto to do film. And it's simply not true. It's not true. You have, maybe an actor or an actress has to go where there's lots of opportunity, but you can make films anywhere you want, including right here in Edmonton, and that's what we're doing. We're doing a lot of that. But I want to apologize to a lot of people who maybe don't know how to get started, because film people have made it their mission to make it as complicated of a language as it possibly can be to make it sound a very simple thing, a lot more complicated. So maybe if one of you guys have ever wondered how to get started, or maybe when people are just talking about film stuff, uh, you have no idea because we purposely make it complicated. Uh, I wanted to kind of go through the basics with you guys and talk about you know, the basic film terms, at least in terms of the positions on a film set, um, how the overall process goes from start to finish in the broadest sense of the word. There's, a, there's only so much I can talk about in 20 minutes, but we'll go through as much of it as we can. Uh, and then if you guys remember your questions, because I'm here, and if you have questions about terms or something specific, that's always, you've always wondered how they did in film, uh, I'll be taking a bunch of questions at the end, so remember to keep those in mind uh, for the end. Um, I'll kind of go into a little bit about me, first and foremost. Uh, like I told you, I'm from Edmonton, but I got fortunate enough to get a film scholarship uh, to go to Biola University. Um, down in, South in Los Angeles, California, which was a great experience, you know, I, you know, but again, I could have gotten the exact same film instruction here in Edmonton at Nate or at Grant Mac or all these other film schools. Calgary's got some great film schools. You don't even have to leave Canada, you know, it's one of those things. What I specifically do is I'm a producer-director. Now, a lot of people ask me what a producer is. Well, those two, really, you're making a movie with these two guys. One's a producer and one's a director. I like to explain it as the director is the painter, and the producer gets him the paint. So he goes out, gets all the logistical resources for the director so that he can accomplish his vision, whatever it ended up being. So the painter-painter relationship usually works for that. Um, I got a BA from Biola University where I went, got, got to go down there in Cinema Media Arts, production emphasis. Um, definitely learned the language there, that's one thing you get immersed in. I, uh, I also went to Harvard University. I went and I did theoretical computer science, more for some of my baseball analytic type escapades, but uh, nevertheless, still education. Um, the three films that I've kind of been recognized for are Upon My Honor, which was essentially my senior, senior thesis at Biola. Uh, did, did, went to the Albuquerque Film Festival, did really well, got a couple of awards, it was fun. I'll be honest, it was very cool seeing one of my movies on the screen for the first time when I got to do that uh, in Albuquerque. Uh, I made a movie called Fish Food. Has anybody seen Happy Gilmore here? You guys know Shooter McGavin? Shooter Gavin was the main star of Fish Food, which was kind of cool, so I got my first introduction to kind of a cool actor of, uh, of sorts, and that was at the Ice Film Festival. And then another film I did called Light at the Flick Filmmakers Festival in Pennsylvania. Um, I worked on shows, like, like she said, I worked, on, uh, I worked for ABC Television for a long time. I started out as an editor and I ended up producing. Uh, I did Extreme Home Makeover, Fear Factor, Wipeout. So a couple cool shows, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing, TV sucked my soul out a little bit, and I knew that I really wanted to make actual films, 
and even if I wasn't making quite as much money, I wanted to at least build in the right direction. So I quit the, I quit the, uh, I quit the television thing, started making my own films, gonna get, uh, ended up getting hired, and then that's essentially when I got hired on back here. There's a production company up here called Mind Engine Entertainment. It was like, Jarvis, if you produce these movies for you, us, you know, we'll do this. You know, we'll help you make your films. And it's a good partnership. But there, you know, you end up being a bit of a in Alberta specifically. You end up kind of having being a bit. You're fighting over less money. You know, there's the, the government is supporting it, um, the arts right now with the media grants and all the film grants that's going on. And plus, it's really easy. When you look at the Canadian dollar versus the American dollar to convert an American, American businessman to spend less money on the same film in Canada than in the United States. So it's a very exciting time to make films here. And it's going to mean a lot more opportunities, not just in Calgary, which where it's really starting to get hot, but even Edmonton. There, we've got some movies that we've been making here, movies that are getting universal distribution, you know, movies that are going to have real budgets. And it's a pretty exciting time just in terms of being here and kind of on the ground floor of Edmonton Film. You guys are kind of getting into it at the right time for any of you who do have interest in this kind of a field. So pretty much kind of the big thing, you know, enough about me. I wanted to talk while I had the time about the actual process of film. So we we'll start with the pre-production, the planning, the getting it ready. And this is really where you make the movie. You don't actually make the movie on set. It's how many times, what you're going to do is you're going to watch the, your film in your head hundreds of times and then you're going to go try and replicate it and then you're going to have it. But the movie is made right here. And the basis of any good film, you know, unless it's an improv thing, you know, which I can respect, is a script. You start with your script. It's, the, it's your skeleton of your film. So you take pretty much your vision. You know, and I'll tell you one thing, writing a feature length script was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And you know, it, it doesn't sound like, it's like, oh, just write your story, but you, want, you need to remember that you're trying to tell a story not just to one person, to yourself, but to everybody. You're, everybody who's going to be involved in the film needs to read the script. And then if you can tell the most, if you can put the most detail into that script so that everybody knows what's going on before you even need to step on set, you have an advantage over anybody who try you have an advantage when you get there because I promise you set will be busy and you've got to maximize your preparation time. So having a good script, a solid script is something that you need to have. Now kind of, you know, the big hindrance, you know, the big deterrent from a lot of people making these films is it's, you know, where's the money going to come from? You know, where's the money going to come from? And, um, it, it, there's a lot of different answers to that question. You've got to be creative because there are grants. There are, you know, I'll be honest, you've you got to start by self-financing. You know, you make your short films and you really, as long as you have a camera, you know, everything else is gravy. You can make a movie for zero dollars if you have a camera. But you've got to self-finance at first. And if you don't self, because if you don't self-finance your own movies, nobody else will. Because nobody, if you don't trust yourself, why would anybody else trust you? is really what it comes down to. So you're gonna start, you're gonna start making short films, you make the short films for the cheap dollars, you make them for a little bit more expensive, more people trust you, you keep doing more films, and eventually, as you grow, the budgets grow with your knowledge at the same time, and that's when it starts becoming easy, because people trust you, is really what it comes down to. That's why I've never, I've never not finished a film, and I've, ever not go, I've, I've never gone over budget. And so, why wouldn't somebody support me uh, if, I, if I do those things? So that's my whole goal there. You got to be really plan. You got to plan about that. You're gonna got to figure out where the money goes. You know, obviously you got to pay your actors often. You have to pay your crew. You know, at first you're gonna just do it with your buddies, but eventually you're gonna have to think like that. You're gonna have to pay for equipment if you want cool shots. Like if you wanted to do like a jib shot, like some sort of crane shot or a dolly shot. You know, not everything has to cost money. Everything has a creative solution. That's the best part about film, is that nobody tells you that you can't do it. You know, as long, you can do anything in film as long as you have a rationalization for it. So, it really becomes down, how do you do it creatively? How do you make your vision come forth in the cheapest way possible? And if you can do that, people are gonna trust you with more money. All right, now, finding your locations and your permits, a very important thing. I'll tell you a story one time. I was in film school, and um, I, was, uh, I was making this film about a guy crossing the Mexican border. And we were finding these cool places. We got him in a poncho and a sombrero, and he's got this really ridiculous mustache, looking really ridiculous. And you know, we were like driving around looking for a place to shoot the Mexican border, and we're like, oh, this place is perfect. It's a big deserty area. It's got some shady buildings in the background. It's got a small fence and then a bigger fence, you know. 
And I'm like, oh, you know, let's just shoot here. This looks great. Let's go I'll jump the short fence. You know, don't jump the big fence because it's barbed wire, but shoot our shells, toss and get out of there. And as we're shooting the last scene of the movie across the street, all of a sudden, five squad cars just pull up, just swarm us, and just absolutely take, they rip my driver out, they rip the poncho guy out, cuff him on the, I'm rolling the whole time. I, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a crazy thing, but it, it turns out we were shooting at a U.S. nuclear weapons base. And uh, I should have done a little bit more time permitting where I was, figuring out if we were allowed to shoot there, slash getting the permission to shoot there. And I learned something very, very dramatic that day, that I should always figure out my locations in advance. So, big thing to do, really that's where your set of your movie is. Scheduling shot list storyboards, essentially when you're going to shoot each shot. Your shot list is really important just because you need to let your cameraman know or the rest of the crew know how long you're going to be here. You know, storyboarding kind of speeds things up. What it is is essentially, a com imagine a comic book strip with the layout of the shot that you want. It doesn't even have to be elaborate. It's just showing what the frame is going to look like. And that's the big thing about directing. You have to control your frame. Everything else besides your frame does not matter at that point, it's what is on the screen. If you can control that, you're gonna have a good movie. Casting, essentially casting, uh, for those of you who don't know, is essentially all the actors that you're gonna bring onto your film. So you have auditions, you know, you go through the cattle call of having people come out. You have a certain look that you're looking for, you know, and you go and you find those people for each role. Extras, you gotta remember how many people are actually gonna be there, you know? How many people do you want sitting at a desk in the background? How many people do you want you know, walking down the street, or you know, does, does anybody have to be in it? It's the kind of thing you got to plan for. And then your crew, which essentially I have broken down as basically as I can. There's always little like sub twists of these different things, but these are the basics. Um, and I would suggest to you guys, anybody who wants to end up directing or producing, have a cup of coffee in each one of these positions, so you can learn it. You don't have to be an expert in everything. You know, trust your department heads, trust your crew, but know what you're talking about in each, you know, in each kind of discipline. Because if you can do, if you can speak to, uh, somebody, another thing somebody once told me, that the hard thing about directing is telling one vision to a thousand people. Now, you, if you can't talk the language in a specific uh, discipline, then how are you gonna be able to communicate your vision and what they need to hear for that vision to come true? So I'd say have a cup of coffee in each one of these. So you got your director, I was kind of explaining, he's the painter, he's the one who's in charge of the story, he talks to actors, he's the one who tells everybody what needs to happen for the vision to come true. Producer, like kind of the same thing, he handles all the logistical stuff, You're like, well, when are we gonna eat, you know, where, like, who goes out and gets the permits, you know, who goes out and finds, uh, takes care of the money and that kind of thing. Even more so to the money side, your executive producer, he, often he is the financier or he is a representative of the financier and letting you know exactly, you know, he, he's the one who kind of relays the messages to whoever the financier is, who is also an executive producer. So you can have lots of executive producers on a set and it, sometimes it can even just be like a payment type of credit. You know, I'll be honest, I give out credits like candy because they are free and everybody wants them. So give out your executive producer credits, give out credits when you can, because people deserve it, why, especially when you're working at the levels where you don't have a lot of money or not paying people. Now moving on to your cinematographer, director of photography. These are the same thing. You'll hear people, talk, it's, a, it's essentially a fancier word that film people like to use for their director of photography. He is in charge of what the picture actually looks like. What does the lighting look like? What kind of move are we doing? Is, does, uh, do we like the framing of this shot? Framing is essentially how the shot is composed, where the people stand and what's interesting in it. It's the same thing, cinematographers, is a fancy way of saying it, but he's in charge of all that stuff. Your production designer, art director, set dresser. This is, your, this is your production design team. They are in charge of whatever is in the shot. So that's talking about props. I'm talking about what's on the walls, like art design. I'm talking anything that is in the shot that is a physical thing is production design. It's handled by these three people. Your production designer designs it, your art director kind of picks it out, and your set dresser goes up and actually puts it on the wall. And that's usually where you start as a set dresser, and you go kind of work your way up if you like that kind of thing in film. Your assistant directors and your UPM, they're essentially in charge of your scheduling slash budgeting on set. They are the ones that actually will, they kind of have to be a bit of a prickly guy. They have to kind of keep the director on time, because the director will take as long as he wants, you know, but you need to still get things done on time, and you need somebody telling you, hey, 
We, we should have been done 10 minutes ago. We have to speed up. Because if you don't have that guy, you're going to go way over time because you will get lost in it and the time will seem like it is nothing to you because you'll get in the zone. I promise you, you need an AD. Uh, and your UPM is essentially your unit production manager and she is in charge of making sure things get paid properly, we have enough money, that kind of thing. Your production sound mixer, uh, mixer and boom op, essentially that's the guy who's holding the boom mic, which is the long pole that is connected to the mic that is actually recording the people who are talking. Actually very important job, a lot more to it than just holding it, uh, including like turning it with your, with, your, with your crew, making sure you know the blocking. The blocking is what your actors are actually gonna go through physically when they walk. Um, and then your sound mixer is in charge of all the levels. He's in charge of making sure it's, too, you know, it's turned up enough or not turned enough, and there's a lot of different aspects to that as well. You got your camera operators, assistant camera, op uh, assistant camera, and your DIT, which is your digital imaging technician. He's in charge of all the footage. Um, the camera operators, essentially, he can be the guy who's doing the focus pulling, doing the, the actual focus ring. Um, potentially, he's, he's the guy who hits the record button. You know, that's, 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 that's the start of it. Uh, your gaffer and uh, the best boy. Essentially, this is the guy who's actually putting up the lights. He's got the gloves on. He's putting up the lights physically. He's taking, uh, and he's a, he has a team of guys who he that work for him to light the scene under the direction of the director of photography. And that includes your best boy, and that includes any other electric people. Now, this is your key grip. He's in charge of all the equipment. He's in charge of making sure that the dolly is set up for the next shot. Uh, whatever or whatever's moving or the jib is set up or he's the one who's got the inventory of making sure knowing everything is he knows where you're supposed to he knows what's going to be happening next and he's setting it up with his team of grips to get that done uh, script supervisor continuity um, essentially in charge of making sure we don't make errors to the script you know for me it's like script is liquid you know you can make whatever you want so it's like but at the same time you have to stick to a certain thing script and continuity making sure things are essentially at the same level, uh, although any, every, pretty much in charge of consistency through the scene and the script. Hair and makeup, pretty self-explanatory. Somebody does the hair, somebody does the makeup, and sometimes it's a little more dramatic. I just finished doing a zombie movie, and we had to, like, we had to do 35 zombie people in four hours, and uh, we only have two people. You know, It ends up getting kind of crazy, so if you like that kind of thing, it can be fun. Uh, and then pre-production distance and grips. Those are essentially your, anyone who's kind of helping out. Doesn't have a not, doesn't have a script role necessarily, but they um, they're here to help. So, moving on to production. This will be fun. I promise you, this is fun. It is a re it is essentially a payoff of all your preparation, and it is so much fun to see your vision come to life. And so everyone else can see it too. Uh, for me, it's the most rewarding thing that I've ever ha I've ever been, and I'm very thankful that I get to do it as a career. And it took me a long time to get to it, but it, um, I'm getting to do it with real budgets now. And I'm very, it, it, I promise you, it, it is a lot of fun to see everybody working, especially the co like the cooperation that you'll see on set. Everybody will be working for your vision, and that is very cool. Post production. Essentially, this is kind of the steps after you shoot. Imagine you go out and shoot, it is cutting out a big piece of marble, and then shaving. Now, post-production is shaping and molding that marble into your sculpture. It is a lot, it's kind of therapeutic for a lot of people. A lot of people love that kind of an art. Um, and you can do it as much as you want. You can keep working on it until it's right. And, and that's the best part about it. It's not, it, it, it is a, uh, I, I, I find it therapeutic. Your editor is the actual one who does the actual cutting. A lot of you will probably, especially if you are in the film competition, you know what an editor is, you know what the editor does. Um, and in terms of cutting and actually telling the story visually, usually that person works pretty closely with the director, but ultimately he has the most effect on the story of anybody, as, even more so than the director, because he actually physically picks what goes into the movie. Um, VFX and coloring, you know, I, I, a lot of people kind of avoid, or, um, I feel like people underappreciate coloring. I think that it's really good to treat your footage either with some sort of overlay, you know, darken your blacks, make your whites whiter, make the colors exactly what you want. You can do that with coloring and it's not hard. It, you gotta make sure, but when he, if, you're, if you're an editor, remember to color your footage because it'll, it'll give you a different look than anybody else can get and it'll be as unique as you, and it's actually, is a, you, you, it's pure creation because you can determine exactly what the film is gonna look like. 
Once that you are colored, that means you have picture lock and it can go to your sound designer. Your sound designer is essentially the guy who designs the, uh, the, the world and in a, in a perfect world, you don't notice him. You don't notice him because you're so immersed in his sounds that you don't think about sound, you just think it's reality. You know, that's what film is, that's what people want to see. They want to see hyper-reality. The sound designer is so important because he tells the story with the audio. The Foley artist, your Foley artist is essentially, if you've ever seen it, like he stands in a room with a bunch of little props and he makes sounds according to what needs to be on the screen. So like, I've seen people, like if everyone, have you ever seen a fight scene? All those sounds are him punching meat like in like by a microphone somewhere and that's your foley artist and it's a very fun job it's a very interesting job to watch objectively um, <laughs> and i think uh it, it, it's a very important part of the movie including the sound effects editor which is essentially the guy who finds the sound effects adr is your dialogue replacement so if you're on set and you have really bad audio or if you have wind that you couldn't control you're going to re you're just going to recreate it and what you're going to do is you're going to Put in a voiceover track over your script uh, of, uh, of dialogue so that you can actually, um, uh, um, it actually sounds good. And then you layer it with actual environment sounds to blend it all together. And that will be in the mixers department. Also, the composer, he is the one who does the music, he's the one who does the score, he's the one who finds out what the, like, the scene is supposed to sound like and then actually. Um, designs the music towards that, and then your post sound mixer gets to take all these different audio elements and mix them together so it sounds proper on a, on a, on a surround sound mix. And your last stage, this one's a pretty broad one and I don't have time to get into all of it, is distribution. Now distribution can be as much as showing it to your friends. It's, it's as much as going to a film festival, but like, when you get up into the higher levels, we're talking about theatrical releases and um, you know, streaming sites and that kind of film. Like I love film festivals and stuff like that. There's a lot of benefits at this. This is essentially the payoff period. This is where everyone gets paid and everyone actually makes any of the money. Um, so pretty much that is, a set, I don't know, I, it looks like I'm running out of time, so this is about time where I, that's essentially the basic outline. I know I can, there's a lot more that you want, um, I'm sure you want to know. I'm going to open up for questions here in a little bit. Um, we got a film that we're shooting this summer. It's really important to me. I'm directing it. It's called John 316. It's about, this, it's about a mental hospital and this guy who thinks he's Jesus. He does a miracle and then all the patients, mental patients follow him like he's Jesus. It's a very interesting movie showing the humanistic benefits of Christianity as well as a bit of an agnostic look at religion in general. So it's a pretty cool movie. It's, it's going to be kind of a Cohen-esque movie and it'll be a lot of fun. We're going to need grips and PAs and interns. If you have any interest in that, make sure you take down this email address and let me know. Uh, we'll be shooting that in June. And if you wanted any more information on our projects, like our Hot Shots Films Facebook page. Uh, it's, it's a little coffee cup and you can't miss it. Uh, now I got it. Does anybody have any questions for me while I'm here? Yes. What's that? The key grip is the one in charge of all the equipment. So he'll be the one who has the inventory of all the stuff. He knows where it is at all times. He is directing his own little team of grips to make sure that the next set is ready to go. So like if somebody, if there's a dolly shot that needs to happen, him and his grips are making that sure that dolly track is set up so that as soon as we're done here, can come right back here and then they go and they tear down this. They're in charge of kind of the bare bones of the project and you don't have to be a film guy to do the key grip. You just have to be organized and you have to work hard and you have to know how things go together. And like, so people who have a little bit more practical knowledge in that case. Anything else? Is that, a, yeah, yeah? My favorite movie I've watched? Can we get, by the way, can we get a uh, mic for the, some of these guys? Is that possible? Uh, my favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption. Uh, I think it's a perfect movie and just in terms of all the different categories of it. It's got beautiful music, the shots are absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking. Um, it's just a well-told story and it's my, that's my favorite movie. Um, yes, is that, uh, next? Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. Well, yeah, I hope you guys learned something, and I know there's people walking by who maybe you know, learned something, but like I said, if you, have, if you have any interest in getting involved in some of these projects, find me on uh, the internet. <laughs> um, we, got a couple, we got a couple movies coming out that I hope you guys get to watch uh, that are getting universal distribution. There's one's called The Zombie Apocalypse in Apartment 14F. Um, it's a little zombie stoner comedy. It's not, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of a Dumb and Dumber meets Shaun of the Dead, so that'll be an entertaining one. 
Uh, we just finished a movie called Breaking Spirits that we shot at FX, which was kind of cool. Um, and we're going to be, got a, we got a couple more projects coming down the way, so it's a good time to get involved in film in Alberta. I hope you guys have a great weekend here, a great, 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 great week, pardon me, and uh, I hope you guys do well in your competitions in your respective genres, guys. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, Jarvis. Let's give him a round of applause. And let's get everyone on down to center stage for our next presenter. Dan Olison from Careers Next Generation has an exciting activity getting you guys up on stage and moving here at the end of the day. That's going to get underway in about five minutes.